الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي الحمد لله الذي استجاب العضية من عباده المؤمنين ويعفو عن سيئات عباده المستغفرين نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونشكره تعالى ونستغفره ونستغيثه نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وصفيه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة النبي الأمي الذي أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانته عما نهى أنه وزجر the secret to this existence is to truly understand where we stand, to truly grasp our place and our role. What is the purpose of the human being and why are we here on this earth? Is our purpose to maximize the sensory? Is it to heighten the degree of pleasure or experience as we go through life? or to seek the ultimate high, as the hedonists believe? Or is it to acquire and accumulate as much stuff as is possible to make our passage through life as comfortable and as easy as it can be? Or is it to acquire fame and renown so that people talk of us and our accomplishments with awe and reverence, and our works live on in, in those people after our death? Or is it scientific advancement to understand more and more fully the mechanical workings of the world around us and in us, to uncover their secrets so that we can control and influence them more completely and more fully? Or is it to ensure the preservation of the species and prevent it from going into extinction? The answer, of course, is none of the above. For no matter how praiseworthy and laudable some of these pursuits might be, they are merely byproducts of our time in this zone of existence. They do not truly define us. They do not truly talk to our core purpose. So, maybe then the reality is that we do not have a purpose. We are simply meaningless life forms in a meaningless universe, going through the motions insignificant in the wider scheme of things, here one moment, gone the next. Those who think this, they are even more ignorant than those who place the purpose of their existence in a mere byproduct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَحَسِبْتُمُوا أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمُوا إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ The translation of which is, Do you suppose that we created you aimlessly for amusement, and that you would not return to us. The first thing you must understand is what this world is. For all its glitter, for all its superficial appeal, it has very little in the way of actual substance. It promises so much, but delivers so little. It is ultimately empty and unfulfilling. It's beauty only skin deep. It may have a golden veneer, but inside it is worthless copper and brass. It is the abode, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it, of ghurur, of deception. Abu Huraira radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, do you want to see the entirety of this dunya? Do you want to see this dunya in its entirety? When Abu Huraira replied that he would indeed like to see that, 
The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa took him by the hand to a rubbish dump full of skulls, feces, rags, and bones, and said, Ya Aba Huraira, Hadihi Ru'usu kan tahrusu ka hirsikum, wa ta'amalu ka amalikum, thumma hiya liyawmu ibam ila jild, thumma hiya sa'iratun rimada, wa hadihi al-adharat hiya alwanu at'imatikum, iktasabuha min haythu iktasabuha, ثم قذفوها في بطونهم في بطونهم فأصبحت والناس يتحامونها وهذه الخرق البالية كان رياشهم ولباسهم فأصبحت والرياح تسفقها وهذه العظام إضام دوابهم التي كانوا ينتجعون عليها أطراف البلاد أبو هريرة في سكولز were once people who aspired in the manner that you aspire and hoped in the manner that you hope. But now today they are but skinless bones and tomorrow they will be but dust. And these piles of feces were once all of the various types of food which you sought and which you earned and then put into your stomachs. But now today they have become something people avoid. And these worn-out rags were once the clothes and the regalia that you wear, but now they have become rags scattered by the wind. And these bones are the bones of your riding beasts upon which you used to travel to the far corners of the lands. Even the grandest things of this world, the seemingly permanent and immutable, disappoint. As Ibrahim radiallahu an, as Ibrahim alayhi salam demonstrated to his people when he pointed out to them that the stars, the moon, and the sun all set. This world and all that is in it is but a temporary zone, a refugee camp, if you will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْمٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةٌ the translation of which is, the life of this dunya is nothing but a game and a diversion. The abode of the akhirah, that is truly life. Hayawan, that is truly life, if they but knew. Nothing in this world is meant to last. Every structure, every fixture is temporary. It is a place where we are accommodated while our true homes are decided by our Creator. Everything we acquire here stays here. Whatever we learn of this place and its workings helps us while we are here, but benefits us not when we leave it all behind and move on to our true homes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set aside for us. And those homes, they are assigned on the basis of what we do in our time here. If we show true aspiration and use our time to prepare adequately for that which is to come, we are assigned the very best of housing. But if we immerse ourselves fully in this camp, in this camping place, and consider it to be the be-all and the end-all, and make no efforts to ready ourselves for when our time comes to move on, we will be assigned to the very worst of housing. Those who gain mastery over this refugee camp, or so it is made to seem to them, they are well pleased with themselves and their efforts. But ultimately, they are the poorest and the worst off of all its inhabitants when it comes for the time to move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ The translation of which is, they know outward and superficial aspects of the life of this world. But they are heedless of the akhirah. They focus all of their energy on the wrong things. And so at the end of the day, we're left with nothing. They misunderstood. The true purpose of our time on this planet, the real reason we are here, 
is to know and to worship our Lord and our Creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The translation of which is, I have not created jinn nor men except to worship me. The Arabic word for worship comes from the root abada. From the same root we get the word for slave. So our purpose here is absolute slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But un unlike the masters of this world, our creator, the one who is our master, is rich beyond need. Our service to him does not take the form of protecting him or helping him in the acquisition of his risk or providing him with pleasure and entertainment. No, there is no benefit for him in our slavehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِسْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ The translation of which is, I do not require any provision from them, nor do I require of them that they feed me. Truly Allah, He is the provider. He is the possessor of strength, the sure. All the benefit in this slavehood we have mentioned is for us. Firstly, it frees us and protects us from being enslaved to anything or by anyone else. And the humiliation and the degradation that is entailed in that form of slavehood. And there is no doubt that it is part of the human nature to fixate upon something. And if he removes his Lord from the equation, then something or someone else will inevitably step into that <coughs> vacuum, whether they be the idols of money, or of fame, or sensory gratification, or other people. All such masters make demands on you that are to their own benefit, and often to your detriment. But that is not true of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that he asks of you, everything that he requires that you do, is to your own benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ The translation of which is, Allah wants ease and wealth for you. He does not want difficulty and hardship for you. And secondly, true slavehood to Allah satisfies and fulfills a human being at the deepest level within his heart. It makes him whole and restores him to the fullness of his being. For it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us, and it is Allah who best understands our needs. Not for the slave of Allah, is that deep sense of pointlessness and futility that often gnaws at the heart of the human being and fills him from time to time with great despair. Not for the slave of Allah is the need to use whatever means are at hand to escape from the drudgery of his life. There is no drudgery when you place yourself in his hands and truly come to know him. For true slavehood implies knowledge. To truly be a slave, to truly serve, you must know your master. That is why the Mufassirun often interpret Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words, Li to worship me, to mean Li to know me. Thus, every endeavor we undertake, every action we do, should be for the purpose of increasing us in knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that takes us away from that must be avoided. So make your Lord your goal and you will have success in everything that you do.